to another edition of Facebook Live. Today we got a great show um, talking to Paul Baker, Business Development, uh, Senior Vice President of Business Development for Copen. And we're talking about, um, we're gonna be talking about Herbals having a conversation where voice is the new touch. And so uh, I wanna welcome Paul. Thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to uh, Thank you. meet with us today. If um, you guys have any questions out there in Facebook land, you can obviously put them in the chat room and we'll make sure that we address them. If you have any questions for Paul, uh, and that would be the time to ask him throughout the show. So we'll be checking back. But again, uh, we're going to have a conversation about uh, hearables. I'm Mark Reese with uh, the direct, the marketing director for uh, Cope and Goldeneye. And again, Paul Baker, Senior Vice President of Business Development at Cope. Paul, thank you for uh, meeting with us. Sure. So let's just like jump right into it. Mm -hmm. According to Gardner, um, by 2019, 20% of all smartphone interactions are going to take place via uh, voice through Apple Siri or Google, uh, the assistant, Amazon, Amazon Alexa. And although this technology is starting to become readily adopted by the consumer, you think enterprise organizations will do the same given the fact that some are very slow to adopt new technology? Yeah, so a few, a few thoughts on that. So first, in terms of their estimation of 20%, I think they're low. Okay. I, I think that it'll actually grow to more than that faster. And that once it sort of hits its tipping point, it will uh, only accelerate. In terms of an enterprise applications, while yes, you could say that enterprise sometimes is a little bit slow, I would also say that there is a bigger need in enterprise and that the benefits of voice are far greater in enterprise applications, many enterprise applications than they are even for the consumers. And so, um, Enterprise might lag a little bit in the early stages, but I think once they do adopt it, I mean, if you think back of some of the enterprise uh, technology adoptions, you know, uh, uh, in terms of adopting laptops and things like that, they were a little bit slow. They've got a lot of things that they have to work out in terms of the IT department and security and just training of, of people and how to use new technologies. I think once they start to go and they're starting now, they will go very quickly. Oh, okay. The, um, it, it's funny, we'll talk about it in a few minutes, but the voice on the GoldenEye unit, mm -hmm. it's pretty incredible. Yep. And, and it, it, so far, I think people are going to be pleased with that. But up until this point, we haven't really seen great use of voice, almost non-existent, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it has been, uh, it, you know, we all have some level of experience with voice control from our consumer devices, whether it's our, our phones really is, is probably the, the one most of us have experience with. And it's not been a great experience. It's been a bit frustrating because it's just not that reliable. Uh, what's wonderful is that Amazon with its Alexa has, I think, shown people a little bit more what voice control can be like. Um, and there's some reasons for that that I think we'll get into in a few minutes, but it basically boils down to, you know, with Amazon Alexa or the Echo device, um, we use that in our quiet home and therefore the, the voice recognition is quite reliable. Uh, with our smartphones or in our cars or other devices or other locations, typically we're out in a noisy environment in the world and that is really the principal cause of why they have not been so reliable and have been a bit frustrating. <laughs> um, you stated a few minutes ago, but we talked about enterprise and we talked about how the consumer market really does, they adopt everything. Let's get this, you know, my dad has an echo. <laughs> That's interesting. But that being said, for enterprise, like what's the current state? Are we still, are we, 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 we got to be just in the infancy yes. with the enterprise market. What is it going to take for them to kind of adopt this? Because you think it would be a natural uh, rational. I use Siri, I use this. So you think they'd be used to it. But I don't think they are. And everybody that we've shown GoldenEye to at some of the shows were like, like wow, it's amazing. And I thought we were like, with the curves, can you touch talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I think there have been two things holding it back. The, the interest on the enterprise side is very broad and very strong. I think that the issues uh, and why it's not fully adopted yet is because of what I was just referring to in terms of reliability, but also because of uh, in the enterprise world, when you're implementing a new technology and new methodologies, it takes time to plan it. It takes time to test it. You know, they, they are all in the process now of testing different types of devices and which ones work well for voice, which ones work well in terms of comfort level for the employees, those types of concerns. It, it would take a while for big organizations to get through. Right on. Um, 
So I have a love hate relationship with Siri. Yeah, I, and I, I think I, we all do. I, yeah. I think we all do. And um, when she's good, she's amazing. But when she's bad, I find myself arguing with her, like, yeah. like literally arguing with her. And I know many people can feel my pain. Given that, how can an enterprise customer overcome that obstacle um, of the hesitant? of the hesitancy to adopt this technology when their only other experience might be with an Alexa or a Siri or a Google Assistant, et cetera. Yep. So it's really important in thinking about these to break it down into its pieces. If, so if you think of Siri or uh, uh, Google Now or Alexa, all of those are really a, a smart backend with a, a speech engine. And I would say from, from uh, my standpoint, all of them actually work very, very well if, <laughs> if they get a good, clean voice signal. So if you, you know, any of those engines, if you speak to them in a quiet environment, they do their job and they do it very, very well. So I, I have no issue with any of them. The issue really becomes uh, device dependent. And with the device, there's really three um, elements or really two elements on the device that become very, very important for how the speech engines perform. So one is uh, the physical design of the device itself is very important and is often underestimated by manufacturers, how important that is into having good effective uh, speech recognition. The acoustic design of the device is critical. Uh, and then the second is the noise cancellation technology that's employed in the device is critical as well. Um, those two things, the, the, the mechanical design or the acoustic design and the noise cancellation technology that are employed have a lot to do with enabling the speech engine to do its job. Okay. So one of the things that you said in a quiet environment, I agree in that quiet environment when it's just one-on-one, -on -one, you're being intimate with her, it mm -hmm. works. We get into a noisy environment that's kind of, everything's out the window. In fact, what would you say to somebody that works in an enterprise environment where that decibel level can be above 100 decibels? You mm -hmm. know, in fact, when we tested GoldenEye, we had that up to 108.5 decibels. It really worked. But in terms of, you know, it's, that's not a quiet environment. Right. Yeah. So our view at, at Copen, and you know, we, we have a, a noise canceling filter called the Whisper technology. Uh, and our view is that speech recognition should work. Period. That includes in the real world. So, yeah. you know, in the enterprise world and even in the consumer world, you know, when we're with our phones or whatever, we're out on a noisy street or maybe in a mall or a, a restaurant or something like that, it should work. Uh, and, and that's really what's been the most frustrating thing for users to date is that, that they don't work in that environment. So when you look at enterprise, you know, the reliability is really even more important than it is for consumer applications. And consumer applications, when it, it's annoying, that's it. In enterprise applications, it, you can make mistakes because you're getting the wrong information. You have delays, you know, time is money. Mm -hmm. uh, so you slow things down when it doesn't work. Uh, depending upon the application, it can be dangerous if you're getting the wrong information or are you know, getting distracted by trying to make the voice system work correctly and get the answer that you're looking for. So, you know, from our view, this, the stakes are higher in enterprise. It needs to work reliably, even in noisy environments. When the people that you talk to about uh, Whisper and kind of, you know, the people that have seen the demos, what has been their reaction? They've been excited about it. They're like, They've this is stunt. Yeah. Yeah. So even people that are very um, uh, well-versed in, in speech and audio technology uh, are stunned by it because they haven't seen things uh, any devices that can reliably perform speech recognition in such noisy environments. And we, we, you know, we can't do a demonstration here today, but, you know, a, as you've seen, you know, we can be in a room that is so loud and we can be this far apart from yeah. one another. You can't hear me speaking because of the noise level, but the device still can recognize the speech. I'll put this uh, link in the YouTube uh, when we upload it to YouTube, but we did, I did a video where we went into our machine room and there was different variants, uh, different variants of background noise. And we got the ambient background noise up to 108.5, which you can see in the video. And GoldenEye not only is taking the commands, but it's also eliminating any crosstalk. So you, I'll, I'll put the link up, but you can see kind of what Whisper can do in a very loud, noisy environment where I was screaming because I couldn't hear anything. We had. 
Yeah, just for, for those of you who don't know, um, 108 dB it will damage your hearing in a matter of a minute or less uh, if you don't have hearing protection. That's very, very loud. Yeah, it, it, it was even with it. It was like I'm like I couldn't. I didn't even know what to expect. I was like, wow. And then even we were um, we we're doing something, and we we actually got to see GoldenEye in use with real you know real technicians, and they were in a loud environment, and it, it, it really was impressive. I think you'll be impressed. Let's switch gears for a minute. You stated at AWE uh, earlier this year that one of the critical missing pieces of great head worn device is a great voice interface. What are the advantages of a voice interface over a touch interface? You said it's better when it works. Can you elaborate that on a little bit going from voice to touch? Yeah, so if you have a device where the speech recognition, where the voice works and works reliably, uh, it is much better than a touch interface because mainly you've got your both hands free. You don't have to be working with or managing a device. You don't have to be looking at a separate device. Typically you've got a screen that you can see with your eyes. So it, you know, if you think of uh, lots of field applications, think of uh, you know a mechanic working on a jet engine. Think of somebody working in a power plant where you know they've got tools, they've got you know uh, maybe holding on to something for stability or something like that. It's really critical that they have their hands free and can concentrate on the work rather than concentrate on some device that they're you know often holding. You know, oftentimes a touch device, a touch interface takes both hands, one to hold right. the device one to, to, to navigate. And so with voice, if you have, uh, again, as, as our GoldenEye system has, uh, the ability to navigate by gesture and motion in voice, where literally the only thing you have to do by hand is turn the device on and you can go out eight hours of work without touching it is kind of amazing. And so from when you think of those types of applications for maintenance, repair, or whatever, where it's important that the guys or the people have their hands free, uh, that's really what it enables. So it's safer uh, and it's more productive. We had uh, an actual HVAC tech look at it and he says, this would be great if it had a uh, flashlight on. And I said, well, just say, oh, turn, open gold my flashlight, turn it on. And he did and it came on and it was like this, wow, <laughs> yeah, like literally I can do that with voice. It was really, but it was, you know, we laughed about it, but it was really, really cool. He was like, this is great. I didn't have to touch anything. I didn't have to take my hands off of anything. Yeah. Oh, we have a question. Um, where, where will we be seeing the whisper chip in the near future outside of Solos and GoldenEye, of course? Yep. Yeah. So um, it is in a, a number of devices. I mean, typically with, since we're selling uh, whisper technology as a component, we, let our customers talk about their devices uh, rather than do it for them. Um, there are a number of other products that it is in in the marketplace. One, as we're talking about enterprise and industrial, one that I can tell you about is uh, with Realware. Uh, they've got a, a full computer uh, that is, is mounted on the head and it utilizes the Whisper technology. Uh, you can certainly see it there. It's got outstanding performance for voice. Um, but it is in a number of other products and uh, is being designed into uh, several both industrial and consumer products. That's a great, I mean, I think a lot of people, Charlie Fink said it the best, is Copen is one of those companies that most important company to AR and VR, but nobody's ever heard about mm -hmm. it. So it, it, it's, it's good to know that the technology that we're going to be using in GoldenEye is also out in the market. It's been tested and it works. Um, you stated that voice or the speech interface isn't the problem when using a voice engine, it's the noise. So let's talk about Copen's whisper chip a little bit more and their extraction technology. How does this solve the background noise problem, not only with background noise, but also with crosstalk? So I know that was a big concern, mm -hmm. uh, crosstalk. And even in the environments that we've seen it at, people couldn't believe that I'm telling somebody to say a command. It's not listening to me. Well, I was actually listening to the person that uses it. Yeah. So let me talk about both of those separately. So with uh, the, the noise, background noise filtration, um, we, we you know, simply put, we use a very different approach than all the other technologies. The other technologies generally um, use a method that breaks a noise environment into tiny little segments uh, called sort of frequency domains. And then they analyze within that what is most likely the voice and what is most likely the noise. And then they try to amplify the voice and suppress the, the noise, they then stitch all of those 
narrow domains back together to try to form one voice signal. But because of that process, it's inherently disjointed, nonlinear. Um, and so for the speech engines, you know, when they hit that nonlinearity, it's like driving off a cliff. They can't deal with it. As humans, we can deal with it because our brains sort of interpolate what is, is in between or what's missing. And so we hear it and, and understand that fine. But a machine can't do that yet anyway. Right. And so, um, so that's what happens uh, uh, with most of the systems today. We use a different approach where we maintain the linearity of the voice signal so that what we feed to the speech engine is clean and smooth and they can, can uh, hear it and respond to it. Um, so it's, it's a, a, you know, it's very simple terms. It's just a, a very different technique that maintains the linearity of the voice signal is what it really boils down to. Then in terms of crosstalk, uh, yeah, both as a consumer as well as an enterprise, you know, we, we, you know, if I'm wearing a device, I don't want something, I don't want my device responding to something that you say. And so as part of our technology, uh, we have what we call crosstalk prevention. So I can say something to the device that I'm wearing and it knows that it's from me, right. not, not because it recognizes my voice specifically, but because of the way we, um, uh, for each device, the way we implement it is essentially that we define the space that it will listen in for a voice. And so you even sitting that close to me would be outside of the space that we would tune a device to listen to. So you could say the exact same thing that I said. You could even say it louder than I said it, but the device would whisper would ignore that. The, 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 it really is. I mean, when you see GoldenEye, we get to use it. And everybody that has seen it has really been... <laughs> They've been wowed. Like they're like, this is really, this is really cool. Like, when can I get? One? It's, cool. it's very, very cool. <laughs> um, if you have another question, we have, I have one more. I have time for one more question because I know Paul is busy. But if you have any other questions, you can post it uh, in the in the room here, the chat. And if not, you can also uh, send me an email, and I can get that to Paul. And we can get you the answer as well. Paul, my last question is: Is voice the new touch? And moving forward, two to five years, will everything be voice? Will we even touch our devices anymore? Not much. Um, you know, when you think of the benefits of, you know, I don't have to take my phone out of my pocket in order to send a message to respond to something, uh, it, it'll be a whole lot simpler. So is voice the new touch? It's definitely becoming the new touch. It's in process now. The changeover is taking place. Yeah, it's funny because what's interesting, even with the new Apple Watch, you don't even need your phone anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you literally leave your phone. So, Paul, oh, I appreciate uh, your time. It doesn't look like we have any questions right now. But it, again, if you do, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, I'm with, I'm Mark Reese. I'm with Paul Baker. If you have any questions for us or Whisper, please feel free to contact us. We'll be posting this on our website at golden i.com It'll be on Facebook and we'll be sharing it on social media. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. it.